hey guys, I want to show you something cool. So the people that own, you know, animals or whatever, they, uh, they generally buy feed in bulk, right? That's to, that's to save you some money. Um, it adds a little bit, you know, generally uh, something like a quarter to 50 cents a bag, a 50 pound bag to, you know, buy a 50 pound bag to have them bag it. Uh, layer feed, goat feed, what, you know, whatever. Um, so you buy them in these, uh, these big old, these big old totes are called FIBCs. And that means flexible intermediate bulk container. And, uh, what these are is, you know, they, they call them canvas, but they're really just kind of a, a poly tarp. And, uh, they're good for storing stuff, you know, bulk feed and whatever. And they got a little chute in the bottom there. It looks like a, you know, an anus. Uh, but they got a, they got a thing that goes over the top here. And it, it covers the feed over top. And you can tie it up. It's got a little string. This guy here, when you pull it up, you can tie it all together and cover your feed. That means you can you can kind of leave it in the, the elements a little bit like a, uh, a shed or something like an open front run. Uh, like a run-in shed or whatever. And, uh, you know, they can see a little bit of moisture, but they won't, they won't get wet because it's got a, it's got a liner inside. Um, the problem is long-term storage outside, you end up with squirrels and mice and stuff eating holes in the side of this container. Um, the problem with that is these vermin carry diseases, uh, that can affect, you know, uh, especially people like me who have a bunch of birds that are, uh, end pit birds. So they have to get tested for pylorum and avian influenza and a few other things. But, uh, you know, you can see here, this is a, this is a hole from a mouse, but you know, they carry diseases and transmit it to the feed and then you feed them the feed and they con they contract whatever that, that disease is. So these are not good long storage or long-term storage devices, unless you have a closed shed that's vermin proof. Uh, so how do you store this stuff? How do you store your feed? How do you make it so that you have a better chance of keeping your feed dry, uh, you know, through the winter or whatever, um, and you don't have a shed? Because, you know, who has $15,000 to build a damn shed when you're just trying to keep, you know, 100 chickens? Um, you don't want to build a shed like that. So, uh, IBCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some of you will say that uh, squirrels and mice and rats and stuff it can uh, chew through an HDP container. And you're right. You're absolutely right. But the thing is, with HDPE, you can't smell through it. So what that means is as long as you keep your area clear, you know, don't leave any corn or uh, material on the ground. Any more than that, right? Don't attract them. They're not going to come. So practice good hygiene. And you can store your stuff in this. And the nice thing is they have uh, they have a top. It seals, you know. It, it keeps it keeps it nice and dry in there. You can see I got some feet up here that's that's kind of wet. And uh, the problem with that is, uh, you know, we, we can't have wet feed inside because then it doesn't flow and it molds and it gets you know gross and it goes bad. And then you got feed that's no longer good for any animals. Uh, it's a bad thing, you know, just as bad as, uh, you know, vermin eating it, uh, the, the mold, it can cause issues. It can give them, uh, you know, respiratory problems. It can give them issues with their stomach. It can, uh, it's just not a good, good thing to feed bad, bad feed. Uh, so you got to keep it dry. And this, this, this cap here, it's got a, it's got a, like a rubber O-ring inside there. And, uh, you can see I got a bunch of feed down in there, but it's got this O-ring inside there and that's a moisture barrier. You can see the top of it. There's no moisture on it, but there's moisture around the ring, right? Around the outside. So that means no moisture is getting in that feed, which is a good thing. And I got bulk silica I'm going to drop in there too in bags. Uh, but, you know, you keep this on, it can get rained on, it can get snowed on, sleeted on, all that fun stuff out in the elements and it won't get your feed wet. So, how do you get it out, <clears throat> right? How do you get it out of there? You're not going to walk over to it, you know, st stick your finger in there and pull a little bit out at a time that's not going to work right that's uh that's stupid it's a waste of time it's it's inefficient doesn't work so uh there's only one other person i know that's done this and uh it's an obscure blog post somewhere but you know here's an idea right so give it a shot if you got a tractor it can lift 1700 pounds or whatever um 
because that's what the that's what the FIBCs weigh full with layer mash about 1,700 pounds, uh, or you can empty them uh, halfway and lift them with a tractor tractor that can you know lift 800 pounds. You know that it's perfect. And you line that guy up that spout on the bottom with the hole on top, and you just feed it in, and it goes in like you know five minutes. It drops 1,700 pounds of feed in there in like five minutes. You gotta you know get in there and shoe it into the corners but other than that it's super easy all right so back to how we get this out of here right so i got this thing <clears throat> for my drill it's a uh it's an inch and three quarter bulb planter uh you know you're supposed to take the drill and when you're ready to plant your bulbs you run it into the ground and dig up dirt right i don't plant any bulbs i don't like flowers uh you know or rather i like flowers when someone else plants them so, uh, you know, you know where we're going with this, right? So check it out. We come over here. Oh, we drop our bucket like an idiot. We stick our bucket underneath of there. And now you don't want to go, uh, you don't want to go full blast on this guy because, oh boy, and you end up with feet everywhere and it's just, it's a mess and it's stupid and you feel dumb. Yeah, just, just take it easy. So you put this guy in there like this, ram it on in and go slow. Look at that. So we're going to fill this five-gallon bucket. This is only going to take a few seconds. Uh, you know, this video is about six minutes so far, and we're 6.30. And, uh, you know, I'm not going fast. If I go fast, you can see there it makes a mess. But, you know, go slower. And, you know, this, this chicken feed, it doesn't, it doesn't really free flow, right? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't flow on its own or whatever. It just kind of sticks. It doesn't, doesn't run out. So you need an auger to do this. So you got your auger here, you're augering out. You wanna pause about there. You know, level it out some so you can get more in the bucket. Run again. Give it another another bit of a leveling here and then what you wanna do is uh, either pull the auger out or you know reverse your drill and run it backwards to clean out that throat so uh you know you don't end up with a bunch of feed just kind of sitting there exposed to the elements and then uh you know i got caps ordered for these because i lost the cap for this this guy here but then i stuffed a piece of uh, balled up gaffer tape in there and uh you know for a little bit it'll keep the mice out uh, until i get them caps in the next few days so uh yeah that's that's how you get the feed out of here and you can see that you know it's real easy it doesn't require anything and these five gallon buckets with you know just five gallons of layer mash in it they're maybe i don't know 15 20 pounds maybe so it's easy to move it's not you know you're not you're not moving you know 40 pounds of feet at a time you got 10 or 20 pounds at a time and you know this is one of them things that you could get it out into this bucket for the amount that you need to feed at that time instead of storing it in another bin or another tote or a feed bag or a trash can or whatever you know what i mean like this can be your container as long as you have this five gallon bucket and your auger um so concerns that i have are easy ones simple it's moisture right so we buy some uh silica that's regenerable we put it in the in the oven and heat it up to i think 300 degrees and it, it drives all the moisture off and you know, when you're ready you put the bag back in here we just have to be careful that you know when we get down low that bag isn't sitting there because then the auger will eat the bag up and they end up with silica in your feed which is no good right uh you know you don't eat silica <laughs> pay attention to the instructions <laughs> um, uh so yeah it's uh i got to figure out a way to tie the bag up in the top there so it doesn't end up in the bottom and get eaten uh Another concern, this throat with that auger, it's gonna wear out eventually, right? Like you can you can already kind of see there's some scratches in there. And that's from the auger dragging across the the you know the plastic. And this is HDPE, it's a really resilient plastic. It's UV stable and wear resistant and all the good stuff, right? It's what you want in a container. But if you have constant wear on it, you wear a hole through it. And I'd like to keep my containers longer than a year, right? Um, so what I plan to do is actually buy a smaller auger. I think they sell one inch or something like that. 
put a PVC sleeve over it, cut a little hole in one end for the feed side, and then cut a little hole in the other end, or just leave it open or whatever, and slide that whole assembly up into there. That way you have a wear surface that is not the container. And then you can end up, you know, you can replace that wear surface, you can keep your containers fine, you're not gonna wear them out. Um, I gotta buy all the stuff to do that, but you know, once uh, once I buy it, I'll post a video that's updated and show you what kind of cool, you know, how it works and all that stuff. Um, that's really the only concerns I have, other than uh, maybe like, you know, these are, about, the bottoms in here are flat. So how do you get the last little bit of feed out of there? Uh, the last, you know, 60 pounds or whatever that's across the bottom. And uh, I don't know, I'm figuring maybe I'll vacuum it out or, or sweep it somehow with a small broom. I, I don't know yet, tilt it. Um, who knows? Uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Now these guys, you notice they have a different valve on them. And these valves are replaceable. So I still want to do the same thing. Put a sleeve in there. Because if you look in the back, it's still uh, still got the throat on it back there. And I don't know how that throat mates into this. But looking at it, it's not on the outside of the back here. So I'm betting that this guy screws over top of that throat. Which means I still have the same problem of wear. Um, so I still want to get that sleeve and slide it in there. Um, and that should solve all my wear issues. I just replace the sleeve as I need. The other thing too is that sleeve will give me the ability to come out and away from the the you know the ball valve because this guy here, you know, this is no problem. I just kick the wood off and I can fit the five gallon bucket under there. But this guy's metal, you know, then that guy doesn't it doesn't go under. So uh, you know I'm I'm gonna end up losing some feed down there, which isn't good. And I paid for that feed and I wanted to go into my birds. Um, so with that PVC sleeve, I can pull it away from the throat of this and actually get it away from the bottom of the, the container so it's not sitting down in here or anything you know this is to catch this is to catch spills but you know it's got little drain holes and stuff here uh and i like i said i don't want to attract any vermin because i don't want to meet in holes in my hp container you know keep your area clean keep it free from uh any sort of food waste you know that can end up on the ground and the mice will stay away it's simple as that, you know. It's 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 a concept that's lost on some people. You know, they people posting on forums and online saying that these HTP containers are bad and all the mice and vermin can eat through them. And yeah, you're right, they can. <clears throat> but do your due diligence. Make sure everything's uh, hygienic. I mean, that's not only do you save yourself aggravation, your birds or your your animals getting sick, but you save feed and you save money and you save time and you save effort and you know throw in a few other things on what you want to save and. That's what you save to. Uh, sounds dumb, right? But think about it a little bit. It works. So, uh, you know, I hope you uh, hope you like this video. It's uh, coming up on 14 minutes here. And uh, it's probably the longest video I've ever posted on my channel. And uh, all i got to say is I hope you like it. And give me some feedback, you know. What can I do better? What can I post? What do you want to see? Uh, aside from my face, that's not really, I'm not really into that, uh, for various reasons, but yeah, uh, here or there, um, yeah, get back to me, let me know what you think, see you guys.